WROW in Albany, New York. Johnny Dollar. Well, it looks like one of our important clients is in pretty serious trouble. Oh, who? I don't know. You what? Nope, haven't the least idea. Well, what kind of trouble? I, I don't know. Oh, now, wait a minute. Johnny, Earl. I don't know who, what, where, when, or why. But Earl... So wh- you'd better come on out here and give me a hand. Somebody better. Well, now, look According here, Earl. According to this I... timetable, you can get down to New York just about in time to make a 6.30 jet flight. But unless I know what it's and all I'll about... And I'll your plane at the airport here in L.A. Well, now, 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 look. Uh, huh? Earl? Hello? Okay, baby, you're paying for it. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the what goes matter. Expense account item one, $183.40, cab to Bradley Field, a plane to New York, and one of the jet flights to Los Angeles. The flight was good all the way, and we made the last, the transcontinental part of the trip in a shade under five hours. And man, that's traveling. At L.A. International, as I climb down the steps out of the plane, I could see Earl Palman waiting for me, over behind the steel fence that separates the main building from the field itself. And then, walking up the long, covered ramp along with the other passengers, but I didn't remember having seen this particular man on board. Oh, oh sorry, Mr. Yeah, that's uh, it's okay. Oh, very clumsy of me, though. I apologize for not watching where I... Say, aren't you Mr. Johnny Dollar? Maybe. No, no, tell me. Are you Johnny Dollar? Well, now, look. Here. Are you? Please, please, tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah, but who are you? Come on, Mr. Dollar, come along with me. Yeah, where and why? This, uh, this is hardly the place to talk. Talk? What about? Just come along, please. Hi, there, Johnny. Oh, hi, Earl. Over here. Yeah, right. Uh, now, listen, mister, who are you? Uh, oh, I am clumsy, well, and I'm afraid my timing's uh, bad. Uh, uh, just a minute, hey. Later, Dollar, later. Yeah, right over here, Johnny. Ah, we'll clear your baggage and hop into my car and be on our marriage. How are you, boy? Uh, well, all right, I guess. Uh, yeah, fine, Earl, fine. Well, you don't look it. What's the matter, Johnny? Well, I just want to be sure I still have my wallet. Oh, I don't get it. Well, I'm sure I don't. Coming up the ramp, Earl, the well-known jostle. Jostle? Yeah, the old pickpockets trick. Bump into your so to divert your attention while he or somebody else lifts your wallet. Oh? Nothing's missing, well, maybe whoever it was did just accidentally bump into well, I might believe that if he didn't stop and... Hmm. If he didn't what, Johnny? Now, what's all the big mystery? Well, Earl, I wish I knew. But now, what's this big mysterious trouble of yours? Well, this is hardly the place to talk. That's what he said. What? Nothing. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay. Anyhow, we'll pick up your luggage and I'll tell you what I know, or, or rather, what I don't know on the way in. Oh, yeah, we love it out here, Johnny. Bought ourselves a nice new home out on Bundy Drive in West L.A., actually Brentwood. Yeah, but what goes And my office uh... is right nearby Westwood. It's really another section of West L.A. Uh Ah, so tell me what goes. And, of course, Mike said to tell you that she'll expect you to park yourself in our guest room. Unless you have other plans? Uh, Well, it depends. It depends on what it is you've called me out here for. Well, I really don't know. Huh? Johnny, I got this phone call early this afternoon. Now, he wouldn't give me his name. But he swore by all that's good and holy that he's a client of ours. He said that we wrote his life insurance policy. That was before I came out here, of course, for a third of a million dollars. Oh. Yes. And he was so sincere and so worried about something that I was sure it wasn't just a gag. Well, uh... I guess that's pretty obvious since I wasted no time in calling you and asking you to come all the way out here. Yeah, well, what else did he tell you? Uh, cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. I have some of my own. Oh, here, here. Smoke one of these. Oh, okay. Thanks. Light? 
Here you are. Mm. Thanks. But now, what else did he say? Only, uh... <clears throat> Only that if I didn't send for you immediately, have you come out here and see him, we might very shortly lose him. You mean he expects to die? I mean, be killed by somebody? Well, what do you think? And that's all he'd say. And he... He wouldn't tell you who he was? No. But I wonder why. And if he expects me to go to him... Well, maybe, of course, he plans to contact you some way now that you're hey, here. Hey, that man back at the... Huh? Yeah. But look, if his life is in danger, something like that, well, what if I hadn't come? Or what if I'd come too late? Now, look, what goes, Earl? It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so maybe it was a gag. Maybe I did fall for a gag. Well, it's not a very likely sort of a gag. And if that man at the airport, I mean, if whoever this client is does know that I've come here... Why? And yet, if he is in danger, I mean, if he was the man who called you... Wait a minute. The minute he saw you there to meet me the way he bumped into me again and then got lost in the crowd... Johnny... But he didn't take my wallet or anything else that I can think of. You're not making any sense, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. But as I said before... What goes... Yeah. More important, what'll you do? What else? Wait and see what happens. How are your children going to dress up this Halloween? As clowns, ballet dancers, skeletons, hobos, cowboys... Whatever their costumes may be, be sure you snap their picture before they go out as well as when they're making their rounds through the neighborhood. But be sure you have lots of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs on hand. Because only with flash can you catch all the fun, color, and excitement of Halloween. Only with flash, both inside and outdoors, even after dark, can you get all the sharp, clear details. Then, too, flash bulbs work with any film, any time, anywhere, with any camera. Pick up several packs of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs, the world's largest selling brand today. Also, ask your dealer for Sylvania's lavishly illustrated 32 page flash guide book that's yours free with the purchase of just one pack of Blue Dots. But hurry, the big night to howl is next Monday. Have your camera and Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs ready and waiting. Now, Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Earl and his wife, Mike, that's right, Mike, have a mighty nice little house there on Bundy Drive in West Los Angeles. As usual with the Pormans, I felt completely at home, especially after cocktails, conversation, and a late but very good dinner. But I still wondered if I'd come out here on a wild goose chase. What goes? Yeah. Well, now, wait a minute, Johnny. You mean that you think I made all this up just to get you out here to see us? Well, I wouldn't put it beyond you, either of you. Well, if he did, he certainly didn't tell me. Yeah, but if he did, Mike, so help me, I'll hand him an expense account that'll stagger him. No, really, Johnny, I swear to you. And listen. Yeah. If this this unknown client of ours actually is in some kind of trouble... Yeah, well, why didn't he tell you on the phone? And why didn't he give you his name? Why insist that uh, only I get on the job? I don't know, but now listen. Oh, I'm listening. If somebody is out to kill him, well, maybe that man who bumped you out at the airport who tried to get you to go along Not with Until him. he spotted you in the crowd when you called to me. But if he's one of your own clients... Look, I haven't met one-tenth of our clients since I took over the office out here. And besides, what I'm trying to say is that maybe the man you saw out there isn't. Huh? Isn't what, dear? Uh, isn't the one who called me on the phone. Oh? What if he's the one who's out to get our client, who somehow knows you've come here to protect him, whose first job, then, will be to get you out of his way? Oh, Johnny, if that's true... Brother, what an imagination. But, Johnny, it is a possibility. You too, Mike. Well, all I have to say is I hope you got a good look at that man out there. Well, I did. Because if he is gunning for you, oh, Johnny... Oh, I'll get it. Excuse me. I'm perfectly serious, Johnny. Well, don't be. Hello? What? Who is it? What? Huh? Well, yes. Just... I, I said yes. Yes, he is on... Is that for me? Just, just hold on a minute. Well, who is it, Mike? Well, it's for you, Johnny. Mm. Okay. But it's the funniest... Like he's trying to disguise his voice. Yeah. Johnny Dollar. You, uh, you're sure? What? That you're really Johnny Dollar? You swear it? Well, sure, of course I'm sure. All right. I I'll have to chance it. 
What the... uh, listen, please. Well, now, let's get one thing straight, mister. Are you the one, the yes, man yes, at the... Yes, the man who bumped you into at the airport. And I'm the one who called Foreman and begged him to have you come out here. Who are you? You, you must promise me that you won't tell him. Why? Because he doesn't know me. He doesn't know about me. And if he calls the police... Well, now, why would he do that? Because of my connection with the... No, listen, there isn't time. Oh, wait, uh, look, look, listen. I thought that you'd be over here to see me before now. Yeah? Yes. Well, you mind telling me how when I haven't the least idea who you are or where you are? But when I bumped into you out there, I... Well, you see, I had anticipated uh, that you might be met by someone, that I, I wouldn't have time to tell you why you... Well, when I bumped you that second time just before leaving you, I... You mean you haven't looked? What? You haven't looked in your... Hello? Hello? What is it, Johnny? Yeah, what well, goes? This just doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, well, maybe it does. Huh? He didn't hang up that phone. It didn't sound like an ordinary disconnect. If those wires were cut... Yeah. And you thought I was kidding you. Well? And did he tell you who he is? Same one who phones you. Same one I met there at the airport. I mean his name. No, no, he didn't. Johnny. Don't you think we ought to call the police? Now, that's the one thing he doesn't want. He doesn't want the police in on this, this, uh, whatever it is. Any ideas, Johnny? I mean, about where to go from here? Well, how can I when I don't even... Uh, give me a cigarette, huh? Yeah, sure. Ah, oh, no, wait. I have some in the pocket of my top coat. Oh, here, here. Smoke, please. Mm, okay, thanks. Hey, Earl. Yeah? There's something very wrong here. Because if that phone line was cut... Well, I have a hunch that that mysterious client of yours, unless we can somehow get to him first, isn't going to be long for this world. But how to find out who he is? Well, look, let's go on down to your office, go through your files on people who carry a lot of life insurance. There may be hundreds of them, Johnny. Well, if you do, wear your top coat, Johnny. I'll get it for you. Yeah, Enjoy sure. Out there tonight. Thanks. Uh, you said a third of a million, Earl. Well, that's what he told me. Also, in spite of the fact you didn't write the policy, he was apparently afraid you might know him, or at least his name, who he is. So? Oh, he was afraid you might call the police. But if he is in danger now... Well, come on, let's get to your office. So he went, and I poured through the file. It was finally finished up about two in the morning. And there was nearly a dozen of Earl's clients in the third of a million dollar policy class. And the only way to find out which of them was in danger, needed protection, was to call them up, rouse them out of bed if they were at home, and talk to them. You know something... We could have saved a lot of time, maybe kept a killer from doing his work. If only I'd realized I'd been carrying the clue to our man's identity all the way from the airport. And if only I'd stopped bumming cigarettes from Earl Palmer. Yeah, figure that one out. Maybe you're about to hit the jackpot. Maybe you're on the point of inheriting half a million or finding oil. Chances are, though, that none of these lovely things will happen. Chances are, if you want a bonanza in the future, you'll have to save for it. Now, there are a number of ways to do that. Some people stuff their mattresses, stash their cash behind a loose brick in the fireplace, or slip it under a floorboard. None of these methods make sense, because that kind of money isn't making a cent for you. Not only that, it may get lost or stolen. Wouldn't you like your savings to make more money for you? Wouldn't you like to have them theft-proof, loss-proof in every way? Of course you would. And you can the United States Savings Bond way. Through the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond a month plan where you bank, $3 will get you four on maturity every time. Nicest thing of all, it's literally impossible to lose your money. If baby tears your bonds into confetti and drops them out the window, you can recover your cash plus interest in United States Savings Bond. Now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the What Goes Matter. No answer, Johnny? No, no, I guess not, Earl. Either the Branfords aren't at home or they're too sleepy to get Branford. up. Branford? J. Morton Branford? Is that who you're trying to call? Yeah, yeah. I should have remembered. They're always in Florida this time of year. All right, then that leaves just one more on this list of big policy holders I made up. Let's see. I was afraid this wouldn't get us anywhere. See, like Except to annoy a lot of our rather... 
What'd you say? Bernard Seelegger. Barney Seelegger? Barney the bum? Barney the who? Alias Barney the butcher, alias Seelegs Brown, alias half a dozen other things. Let oh. me see that. You know him? Who he is? That's the one, all right. Johnny, the cops have been trying for months to locate this man. No kidding. Yes, in connection with a lot of narcotics running over the Mexican border. Uh-huh. So if he's our man wanting protection, just forget him. If somebody's out to knock him off, it'll be the greatest public service. Of the... The... Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks as though your predecessor handed him insurance for 320000 Why, he must have been crazy insuring a man like that and, and for that amount. And... and look, look, only about six months ago. Yeah? You'd uh, rather see him dead and let the company pay off? Well, you're darn right. I've... Well, no, no, of course not. We've got to find him, Johnny, and, and somehow we've got to... But how and where? Wait, now, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Lieutenant Spaulding, Jim Spaulding. What? He's an old pal of mine, narcotic squad. Here, let me have that phone. By the time they got Jim Spaulding out of bed and put him on through the switchboard, a lot of precious time had been wasted. But that just couldn't be helped. Right, Johnny. And listen, Barney Seeliger tried to call me earlier in the day, only I was down near the border. He tried calling you? Well, nobody knows it, least of all the regular police. Well, that's the reason he didn't want Earl Foreman to know. We don't dare take a chance on any leaks. But wait, uh, look... But uh, Barney is of more help to us in this narcotics racket than any man alive. And if somebody's trying to knock him off... Uh, look, did he give you his present address? No, no. Well, then I'll have to dig it up. Oh, when you do, give it to me, huh? Yeah, I'll have one of the boys call you back after I'm on my way. Okay, the number here is... Hello? Hello? Oh, just how does he know where to call me back? I heard all that, Johnny, and if he's swung to the side of the law, it's more important than ever that we... <laughs> now, you can give me a cigarette. You've smoked all mine. Mm -hmm. uh, side pocket of my top coat there. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me see if I can get Lieutenant Spalding back. Oh, what's the matter? Well, there's card in your pocket with the cigarettes. Card? What card? It's the address of some blonde or redhead you plan to call yeah, on. Yeah, let me see that. On Bundy Drive, too. Just half a dozen blocks north of where we live. Earl, look, don't you see? He told me that when he bumped into me the second time... Don't you see? Your pal Barney slipped this into my pocket in case he... 12124 North Bundy Drive. Okay, you call headquarters. Have him tell the lieutenant I'm on my way to this address. Well, now, Johnny... Your car. <laughs> Twelve one twenty four North Bundy was a small, solid-looking house almost hidden by the remains of a neglected orange grove. There were no lights on, but I went up to the front door and knocked. No answer. And, of course, it was possible that Barney Seeliger had called me from somewhere else. But this was the address he'd been so careful to slip into my pocket. Then I noticed where the power and telephone lines led over to a service box at a rear corner of the house. Yeah, that's right. Hmm? Now, don't move. So who's moving? So I cut the phone line so as he couldn't call for help in case he seen what I was... Huh. My gun, huh? <laughs> Thanks. Maybe I can use an extra one. Maybe on you. So, who are you? Oh, I, uh... I'm just out for a moonlight stroll. You care to join me? Why, is guys... Oh, keep them hands up over your head. Oh, I, sure, sure, sure. You a copper? No. Huh? I asked you. Oh, maybe you are. Maybe I'll give you the same oh. treatment that Stooley's getting uh. inside there. <laughs> uh. You want to see? You want to see what you got coming after I'm sure he's dead? And just walk. In front of me. Yeah. To the corner window there. He showed me one of the most ingenious and diabolical instruments of murder I've ever seen. In the window was a small, compact air conditioner. But instead of pumping air in through it, he blocked it off, except for a small aperture. And leading to this was a piece of pipe, a pipe connected to a gas line. So instead of taking in air, it was pumping raw gas into that room. That's right. He's sound asleep. The other window, I seen him take a couple of sleeping pills like he always does when he's scared. When he's dead. I disconnect this line and nobody knows the difference. No. No. 
The air conditioner cleans out the air, and by the time they find that Suli's dead body, nobody knows how it happened to him. Locked up there inside his own... <coughs> oh, no, you don't. I can try, baby. I'll kill you. All right. All right, now, mister. You should have known better. Yeah? Well, you just listen. Yeah? Because now I'm going to kill you with your own gun. Now! Dollar! Johnny Dollar! It's so... It's okay, Lieutenant. Oh, well, what goes, Johnny? You knew I was coming up here. Why didn't you... What's this? Yeah, you... You better shut off that gas and hope that your pal Barney in there is still with us. Yeah, Barney was still alive, but barely. Which is more than you can say for his would-be assassin. One of the lieutenant's bullets had caught him square in the head. So, that is that. Expense account total, including incidentals, and the trip home to Hartford, three sixty-eight fifty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a super salesman selling death. But he's not the only one doing a selling job. You've heard the expression, it takes a crook to catch a crook. Well, I'm afraid that's exactly what gets me into trouble on this one. I mean, on account of in order to catch him, I try a little selling myself. I mean, after all, when the potential customer is a beautiful blonde, who wouldn't? That is, until a killer comes in. Then trouble and nothing else but. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Forrest Lewis, Frank Gerstle, and Chet Stratton. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Next, a taut drama of Hollywood homicide as suspense follows on the CBS radio network. WROW in Albany, New York.